Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Soundcheck. We're going to have some fun today. We have a special guest with us today. This is Ganon Kashua from Universal Audio. Great hey, to see you. Thanks. Nice to be back. <laughs> Glad to have you back here. We've got uh, something cool for everyone to check out. We've got the new Apollo X4. That's right. Our brand new desktop interface. We're so proud of this and really happy to be here to talk to you about it. Absolutely. So we did a demo before where we actually went through all the features in the X4. What we're going to do today is do a complete session from setting up the interface to setting up the console software to our DAW software to plugins, kind of the whole process all the way through and show you how this whole thing works. It's an amazing interface and it makes the whole process really simple. Yeah, we're gonna have some music here, so stand by. Now let's start at the very beginning of the process. You purchased your Apollo X4 from your Sweetwater sales engineer. It's arrived. You've opened up the bag of candy and yes. you've enjoyed that. And now you're going to put your interface to work. Right. How does the whole thing get started? It's a piece of cake. Uh, really what you're doing here is you're just downloading the software and installing it. We have a monolithic installer which carries the drivers, the console software, all the plugins, and it can't get out of sync. So it's it's a large installer, but it carries all of the, inc the included pieces that are needed to run the device, the Thunderbolt drivers, et cetera. Okay. Um, backing up though, hopefully when you purchase this, uh, you took advantage of a custom bundle from your Sweetwater sales engineer. Of course, it does come with the Analog Classics Plus bundle, which is 16 killer plugins that give you everything you need to record. Right. But we have over 200 or close to 200 titles in our library now. So there's a lot of other things to take advantage of. And, right. You know, that's the right time to take care of that because you can get the best pricing at point of sale. Sure. So you've downloaded the software. Downloaded software. You've installed it on your computer. Yep. And then what's next? Well, you should connect your interface first when you install so that the driver knows what to connect to. So okay. if you connect it up, install the software, restart, and mm -hmm. then you're ready to go. And there's actually a little quick start guide yep. in the box itself, isn't there? That's that's right. And there's we have so much video content on the website, the the knowledge base, the quick tips, the things that get you started. It's really it's a simplified process. Right, but it really is two steps, yep. three steps, right? Plug, plug the interface in, download the software, install the software, and you're pretty much ready to go. You're ready to go. That's right. Right. So what we did is after installing the uh, interface and the software, we brought some musicians here into the video studio at Sweetwater, mm -hmm. and we're going to do a session. So what we've got for this first part of the session is we have uh, Nick playing uh, congas, mm -hmm. we have Jacob playing bass, and we have Derek playing electric guitar. Now we've got four inputs on the X4, but how do you set that up so that you're able to monitor everything so we can get a headphone mix to them? We have a lot of cables going in and out here. Tell yeah. us what's happening. Well, okay, so let's go into the console software so we can see what's going on here. Um, what I've done is we're using Pro Tools as our DAW in this case, but you can use any DAW, it's all the same. So let's start with the console software. Console software is all of the channel strips, the input channel strips that I'm pointing to here, correspond to the inputs on the front of the device. Okay. So that's here, mic one. I happen to rename it guitar, but if I take that out of there, it's analog one. So analog one is that. Okay. It can either be your mic and line input or it can be a direct input here. When you plug that in, it switches to high Z directly automatically. Okay. So it's as simple as uh, plugging a channel in and then seeing what uh, what it corresponds to in the console. One of the things we try to do at UA is always give you that instant gratification. Plug something in, you should hear something immediately. If, right. that, if the fader's up and that channel is unmuted, you'll hear sound. Okay. So that's how you get started. That's very simple. Yeah. So we've got a uh, direct guitar yep. coming in, the high Z input on the front of channel yep. one. Yep. You have bass coming in on channel two, again, Correct. on a high Z input, so that's direct out of the bass. That's right. And then you have two microphones in the back that are over the uh, congas. Yeah, just right. a pair of overheads, and really we, we use the SE6s. It's just a nice, uh, low-priced microphone. Fantastic response, though. I think they sound sure. terrific. So what we're trying to do here is is give you a pretty good uh, look at you know what might be paired with an X4 in the studio. Yeah, Not everybody right. has an 87. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. If you do, that's great, but yep. other mics work well also, of course. Right. So now the, the Apollo has microphone preamps in it, Correct. but there also are ways to change the sound of that with some different preamps and things. Tell us yeah. about that. Okay, this is that's one of the, the uh, most important features of any Apollo is what we call unison. So unison preamps combine hardware impedance changing so actually changing the electrical impedance of what is hitting the microphone mm -hmm. and combining that with software modeling of various uh, tube and transformer-based microphone preamps. So in this case, on the, on the Kungas, I've got a pair of 610s. 
So I love these because they're tube based and you have a bunch of uh, options here. So <clears throat> in terms of the EQ, I brought the, the high EQ down to 4.5K and gave it a little bit of boost. Uh, I left the impedance at 2K, it defaults to that. That's a good you know, kind of standard impedance. And sure. we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, and that's as simple as that. So now when you insert a unison preamp, it takes the stock uh, Apollo preamp and reduces the impedance from 5.4K, which is a pretty standard modern preamp impedance, right. and reduces it to two or five if you have a switch. And so automatically you get a, a character change of that microphone. So you have three flavors that you can do with the same microphone. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So you have your input paths mm -hmm. configured at this point. Yep. Now we have uh, two sets of headphones coming out of the front and some cables here on the back. What's happening with those? Those are driving uh, an additional pair of headphone outputs uh, in because we've got the guys sitting over there. So we used a headphone distro amp. You and I are listening over here. We have up to four uh, Q outputs. And so you can configure from two to four outputs. And these guys can be configured to go uh, mirror to an output. So in this case, you and I were listening to headphone one and two, mm -hmm. and the guys were listening to headphones three and four. Okay. So we're just giving them the, we're sending out that headphone output to line one and two and line three and four. And so, just, so just to be clear, yep. there's two headphone amps in here, and those Correct. are independent, and that's what we're listening to here in our control room, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have quarter inch outputs that are feeding into a separate headphone amp that's right. that the musicians are listening to that's as right. well. Okay. And the cool thing here is that because the Apollo X4 has digital output, you can configure it to be an ADAT device and send those out ADAT. So if you have a mm. digital input device, you can drive your headphones with that. Right, right. Now, where are you doing the actual headphone mixes? How is that showing up? In this, uh, I've got it set up very easily. I'm doing the headphone mixes in the DAW, and I'm monitoring through Pro Tools at this point. I've got my <clears throat> my buffer set at a very low uh, 64 sample buffer, so there's very low latency. Mm -hmm. You can set it to 32 if, if you need to. Um, but 64 seems to be a pretty happy place for most people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just creating the Q-Mix as a what you hear is what you get in um, in Pro Tools. Okay. So these guys I can send directly to Qs. Um, and let's see if I bring up my trusty little window here. Here's our configuration window that shows cues and the Oceanway sends. That shows you what I'm actually sending to uh, the Q system, mm -hmm. if you will, and then what I'm sending to the DAW, or sorry, to Oceanway uh, for a little bit of reverb. A little bit of reverb. Yeah. So that's actually coming back into the console software that's right. and running through a reverb in that console software. That's, that's, right. that's kind of a power user tip there. How are you doing that? Okay, this is great. So what you do is uh, in Apollo console, if you look at your I.O. setup, this is the I.O. matrix that we produce here. We're using um, four headphone outputs, so our lines one through four are busy, but we have these wonderful channels called virtual channels, and what these are are direct virtual conduits to any application on the computer. So they show up in Core Audio. You look at Core Audio, you're going to see virtual inputs and virtual outputs. So what I've done in console, they show up as virtual inputs, Right here, if I, I've already called this send to aux one and send to aux two, and I have a, a unity gain send to the aux there, but if I just take that name away, you can see that that was virtual one. So by virtue of, by virtue of making virtual one <laughs> <laughs> a send to a reverb, now what I can do is go into the DAW, and I can send these guys to a hardware output. You'll notice this is not a bus. This is an output, a hardware output. Okay. And you can see the virtual threes and fours. I've already renamed this to virtual, uh, to auxes. So I have aux one and aux two, but there's my virtual one and two. Okay. What that does is it sends this signal over to console, but it doesn't do any of the processing in the DAW. So your latency stays low, the traffic is low, and all the processing and the heavy lifting happens in console. So right. the beauty of this is that you can get your, uh, get your time-based effects happening as you're recording. You don't have to create it in two places. You just listen through the DAW and send it back from the DAW to console. Right. So very cool. Yeah, it gives you a nice comfort reverb for the musicians. And, and again, you're not adding any latency. It's all taking place basically on the DSP inside the Apollo. That's right. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. You could also, I mean, this, this is maybe a little more advanced way of working. You could certainly 
route your headphone mixes inside the console software oh, as well, absolutely, and handle all of that there. Yep, uh, and uh, and add reverb and things uh, as you're as you're tracking in that case too. That's right. And to do that, you simply click the Q source that you want to use, and then uh, over in your DAW, and then we have uh, corresponding faders. Here's the Q one through four. Here, these are for the live inputs, <clears throat> and then in the DAW, you have that same. Uh, amount of outputs they're listed directly as cues one and one through four. So right. you can you can send directly. So to there are multiple that. ways to do it. Yeah. So the, that way kind of creates a, a hybrid mix. So you're sending individual sends from your DAW, but you also have live inputs. You know, if you're monitoring through console, you can do that. Right. So it's, the flexibility is is huge. Right. And one of the cool features we took advantage of with the X4s is actually a built-in talkback mic. Oh, yes. And you can route that out to the monitors, so you can record that if you want to slate things. Exactly. And, uh, of course, we were also able to talk to the musicians over in the studio part of our, That's <laughs> right. our it, demonstration it, room here. And you have individual um, control over each of these talkback levels. So I can send a little more to Q1 or a little less to Q2 if I need to. I can also do talkback to monitor. So in this case, we're recording through the monitor, and mm -hmm. that's going to go to my slate. So that serves as my audio slate. So that's a really great feature for being able to slate takes or talk to the guys or talk to the cameras. Right. So right. Completely routable. Okay. So at this point, we're ready to make our recording of our basic tracks. So let's, let's go. go ahead and get going. All right. All right. Let's try this one more time and whenever you're ready. Got our basic tracks done, yep. but I know Jacob wanted to lay down a bass melody oh, yeah. on top of things. So let's go back and we'll overdub that. Is there a lot of changeover we have to do in order to be able to monitor all these different things, or how does that work? It's a piece of cake. Again, because we're monitoring through the DAW, I don't have to do anything. It's what you hear is what you get. If he needs a little more, I can just adjust it here, or I could do the send thing. Mm -hmm. But really, for this take, I duplicated the track. The input's the same. I, he was playing a different, uh, a different part, so what we did was take that uh, preamp that he was using, which has the Ampeg B15 in, mm -hmm. my favorite bass amp of all time, and an LA-2A. And so these guys uh, allowed me to set the tone up and then get a, a good amount of compression. He was playing much you know, higher and less bass notes, so we needed to get a little more gain. Right. So right. that's all it was. Now, one of the cool things is as we're doing this, you can actually be saving those channel strip configurations, right? That's right. So in console, <clears throat> You can just go here. This is your channel strip preset menu, and you can see I have Sweetwater bass, Sweetwater electro guitar. So if I want to recreate that channel strip, uh, I can just do this. I'm going to blow away one of those guys, but who cares, right? So right. Just do that, and it loads. Nice. So it takes the preamp. You can see I've got the 55 Deluxe, and I've got the the 175B, which is one of my faves. Right. So that's it. It's that as simple as as storing that. So when you when you come to the preset menu, you just have to go to save, and then you're offered a variety of places to save it. But there you go. Right. And that's a convenient way to build up a whole library of presets. So if you're always tracking the same person, even if you're not, if you just want to have a good starting point, that I like to start with the B15 bass amp yeah. with an LA-2A, store that yeah. and it, install it with one click. Yeah. And channel strips are a really cool thing because it is just channel by channel. Uh, we have another way of managing sessions, which is the console uh, session saving dialog. That mm -hmm. saves the entire console. So that rebuilds the thing from ground up. So if you have effects over here, it'll build up everything as a snapshot of what the console is doing. So you have two two different ways of bringing that your favorite preset back in. Right, and those are that's sort of a power user tip, but it's the kind of thing that can really streamline a session and, and make your workflow much more efficient. Oh, having having screen snapshots, having console snapshots is is critical. If you're day in and day out doing session work, there's another one that I can show you too, which is the console recall plugin. And that is uh, another step in that direction. You put that on your master fader. It doesn't pass any audio, but it takes a snapshot of the console so that as you're working, you're getting that snapshot every single time you make a change and it syncs every time you hit save in Pro, in Pro Tools or your DAW, whatever. Nice. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a couple of ways that we help you use console as your front end because that's really what this is all about. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> So 
finished our bass overdub. Yep. And now uh, we'd like to add some percussion. I know Nick was thinking yeah. about adding some shakers yeah. in there. We already have a couple of microphones up over the congas. Yep. He's got his shakers in hand. Did we have to change anything else? I did the same, a similar uh, technique that I did on the, the uh, bass overdub. I st stayed with the 610. However, because shakers are so much quieter than congas, we kicked up the, the tube preamplifier section. We kicked up the level, and then I uh, brought back the tone just a little bit. Mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're high shakers. So sure. There you all go. Right. But all you do, it's just a level adjustment. So no, there's no dynamics on any of the percussion yet. Right. I, I tend to record with no dynamics on the things that have a lot of, a lot of dynamic range because you don't want to shrink that too much. Right. You know, vocals maybe, guitar certainly, bass certainly, but things that are percussive, I try to let it have a lot of range and then you can modify it later. Right, great tip. Yep. All right, so I think what we should do is add a couple of acoustic tracks. Uh, let's do a left and right kind of a rhythm thing that helps support the the shakers and the jangle. But what I want to try to do is get uh, a little bit of brushy sound there. And at that same time, let's show off what Unison does. Okay. Okay. So right off the bat, I just hijacked the right microphone from the Congas, same mm -hmm. uh, SE6. Um, let's hear what the effect of the Unison preamp is first. Okay. okay so here's the stock preamp. Just go ahead and play a little bit. So the by the stock preamp, you mean just going straight into the X4, no plug-in, basically? Straight into the X4, no plug-in. Okay. Okay, great. Now, let's uh, turn on the 610B. So now what you're going to hear is the tube preamp and the stock impedance of 2 kilo ohms. So. Okay. Let me switch back between the two. To just strum a little bit, I'll switch back and forth. Okay. okay. You can hear there's a difference You're in a tube preamp. The input impedance is different, so it gets a darker, uh, a little less bright tone. Now, let's switch that impedance from 2K to 500 ohms. So just play a little bit of that, and I'll switch between the two as you're playing. Okay. Okay, go ahead. that um, it's an amazing difference it's like the sheen kind of opens up and right. you get all that pixie dust at the top i think that can be helpful to us right so let's uh let's try uh, one pass with the 2k and i'll add a little bit of eq we can brighten it up a little bit and see how that goes, see how it goes. Sure. okay uh give me just a little bit more and let me uh, adjust the eq Okay, so let's do one uh, one quick pass like this, and then we'll uh, swap it out and do another one. Sounds good. All right, here we go, at the top. Okay, so, nice take. Thank you. Let's do this again. Okay. <laughs> Can I drag you through it again? Sure. Doubling is great because, you know, it takes all the rhythm inconsistencies and blends them together and makes a nice wide thing. It's actually a good thing. Right. So let's do that again. Um, in Pro Tools, I'll just duplicate the track. You can okay. do this in any DAW, you duplicate the track. But let's, let's change the sound so it's not exactly the same thing on each side. So we'll go back over to console here. And if you could play just a little bit more, 
Let's change that impedance down to 500. And I'm going to roll off a little bit at the top so it's not too bright. Oh, go ahead. Ah. And maybe we'll make a little, maybe we'll make a little low end happen here. So. Why not? I mean, it's, a, it's just a different flavor. We're going to pan it all the way to the right. So hang on. That's going to go to your right headphone. Okay. All right. And I turn the EQ up. I'm going to bring the gain back just a little bit because with the lower impedance, it's louder. Right. So let's try that now. And we'll go one more time. Nice job. Thank you. Yep. All right, so let's take a quick listen to these two th tracks together so you can kind of hear what the difference is what, that we just did. So here's the acoustic one, and this is with the, the uh, UA610B at 2K ohms with a little bit of bright. Here we go. And now we'll switch. And then when you pan them, so by taking the same guitar, same microphone, diff just different presets on the on the Unison preamp, you get a completely different sound, and that's it adds that nice chorusing. Nicely right. done. That, that's amazing, though. <laughs> it really, uh, really is a dramatically different sound. And I think we should emphasize that what's changing there is not just software emulation and modeling. There's certainly some of that going on, but it's actually changing the impedance inside the hardware of the, right. the interface. The physical impedance, the right. electrical impedance, which is that's that's what this is so exciting about because you, as a user, can use your microphones. It's it doesn't matter. We don't have a a reference microphone that you have to use. You can use the Unison preamp, change the impedance, and right off the bat with the 610, you get three different impedance models. Right. <clears throat> and the other uh, other uh, Unison preamps have different impedances as well. So that we have a whole range of impedance settings that get us really close to the originals. Right. Okay, so we've laid down two rhythm acoustic guitar parts, and uh, again, through magic of digital trickery, we're going to add a few more lead parts here and there, or whatever that might be. But we've gotten to the point where it's now time to mix down. Do we have to change everything? How does all that work? You don't have to change a thing. That's the beauty of the Apollo system, is that the same DSPs that power the real-time effects, the things that were getting us the sounds, the unison preamps, the compressors, the reverbs, and all that stuff, all that runs on DSPs inside the Apollo that we're now just going to harness and use in the DAW environment. Okay. So, you know, as an example, say one, one thing I would normally do is add a master fader and, you know, pull everything together. And on something like that, maybe I'm not even going to start in the first insert. I'll start in the second insert so you don't have to move. So I always have one way <laughs> right? Exactly. So uh, let's, take, let's just take something, one of my favorites of all time is the, uh, the UAD Fairchild 670. And it's a beautiful 
you know, mastering compressor basically, and it, it's a broadcast compressor from the 40s or 50s, mm -hmm. ancient, 22 tubes in this guy. Amazing. So for those of you who have ever had a chance to smell one when they turn on, it's <laughs> heavenly. <laughs> anyway, so it, it's the same, you can see the same plug-in list. Um, when you go down the list here, where it's the same actual plugins that are in uh, the whole list that are available in the console as well. So it's as simple as instantiating a plug-in in your DAW. Right, and they're still using the DSP inside the Apollo. Absolutely. And so your computer is not, not bogged really down. working at all. Yeah, he's just sending audio over to this guy. This guy is doing the processing and then mixing it out the bus. Right. It's a piece of cake. Right. And at that point, you can edit your audio, you can do all your mixing moves, your automation, just as you would with any other uh, mixing session. So the beauty of that is, you know, if you're in the middle of your mix and darn it, I need another guitar part. So what do you do? You create a new track. You've already got your presets in the console. Just load, load another guitar part in or create something new if it's another completely different thing. Right, load a channel strip up or yeah. whatever you're going to Yeah, super easy. Man, Gannon, it's just, uh, you know, I've worked so much with the Apollo stuff and I have uh, such an appreciation for how easy it is to use. And uh, I think the demonstration you've done here today just really brings that home, that it's as simple as plugging things in and tracking them to your DAW and, and uh, just making music with it. That is the key. We want to help people make music and get out of the way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and inspire you in the headphones. One of the most important things, you know, that I've learned as an engineer over the years is the most important mix in the house is the headphones. Sure. So, yes, it sounds all great when the band comes in and everybody sounds together, but really, right. when you're making music and you're trying to make that note happen, headphones. Right, right, absolutely. Thanks so much for coming in today and uh, spending some time with us and doing this session and showing us how the whole process works. It's a simple process, but it's so effective and the workflow is so efficient. My pleasure. Always great to see you. Thank you, sir. Come back again soon. I will. Right on. <laughs> and thank you for joining us here at Sweetwater Soundcheck. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the whole process of recording using the Apollo X4. A lot of fun, and you can make a lot of great music using just this one interface as the hub for your entire system. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. 